Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel and welcome back to my Sims 4 speedboarding video or welcome to the channel if you are new here. So in today's video, I'm going to be building in the world of Penfold and Bagley, which is the world that we got from the expansion pack, The Sims 4 Cottage Live In, and I'm going to be building a English countryside cottage using custom content. So this house ends up having four bedrooms and four bathrooms and it's built on a 40 by 30 lot. Now this week I'm building using custom content which is something that I haven't done in such a long time and honestly I'm actually quite surprised with myself because normally on my channel I like to do a CC build every few months or so because although I thoroughly enjoy custom content I think all of it is so beautiful it's so much fun to play with and sometimes with CC you can get like mini mods to go along with it I just I have the absolute time of my life building with CC I also appreciate that not everyone can download custom content whether you're playing on maybe like a lower spec PC maybe you're playing on like console or something and so normally I like to yeah just do do a CC build every few months or so you know like just sprinkle them in there it's September I haven't done one since January and I do not know how that has happened and so this week I just thought it was around about time and if I'm honest a little bit overdue that I sat down and built something using all the CC that I've got within my mods folder. Some of the pieces that I've used I have definitely used in previous builds before but then recently I've also gone on a little bit of like a mini CC shopping spree and so I was really excited to use some of them new pieces in this build and just overall I'm just so absolutely in love with this house. It was so much fun to build it and yeah I really hope you guys like it but getting on and actually talking a little bit more about the build. So of course I'm building like an English countryside cottage. It needed to be like a red brick building because to me, it's very common in the UK to just drive around and basically just see houses like this, especially with a conservatory. I don't know what it is, but for some reason we love a conservatory in the UK. I, I ain't got one, but the amount of people that I know that have got conservatories, I always just think it must be such a pain to clean the roof personally but besides the point I was looking at a picture when I was building this house I'll find the picture and I'll pop it up on the screen now so the picture itself I found on Pinterest but I was able to find out that this was originally on I think it was either right move or on the market basically some sort of like estate agent real estate website in the UK this house was for sale I was able to do a little bit of digging also found out that this house was located in the Cotswolds which if you're unfamiliar Henford and Bagley, the world that we got from Cottage Living, was very much inspired by the Cotswolds in the UK. They kind of like based Henford and Bagley of this area. And when I found that out, it was like, well, that's perfect. Because when I found this picture on Pinterest, I looked at it, thought that would suit in so perfectly on Henford and Bagley. Then found out that it basically would quite literally fit in in Henford and Bagley in real life because it was based off the court spells but I only had like the front portion of the, the build to look at like the front portion of the house even though it was on some sort of like real estate website by the time I went and tried to find out like what the floor plan looked like what the back garden looked like the house had been sold so someone now lives in it well I'm assuming someone always lived in it but the the actual house was taken off the market and so the the back portion of the build the garden the floor plan everything like that I just kind of made up and just did what I thought looked good but yeah the initial front portion of the build was very much inspired by this picture now something that was in this picture on Pinterest which I implemented into this build was the conservatory on the front right hand portion of the build I just think this looks so blimming cool like I just I was so happy when I was able to actually use these roof pieces because the roof pieces that I'm talking about by the way are the glass roof pieces on the right hand side but I've had them in my game for years like, I've literally had these for the longest time in my game but I've never really known how to actually use them in a build and how to make them make sense the actual roof piece themselves there is four pieces you kind of just pull them out of build and buy it and then you basically plonk down a room and then just put the roof piece onto it you don't have to like faff about with the actual like the making of the structure of the roof piece that makes any sense but there is four roof pieces and I just initially didn't know how to piece them together eventually we end up having some sort of like side conservatory that then also wraps around to like the front of the build kind of like what the picture looks like now I just thought this was so cool and I didn't want to have it so it's like one massive conservatory and so I tried to split it up into two separate rooms on the inside 
one of them, like the main conservatory on the side of the house, ends up being the dining room, which I feel like if you do have a conservatory in the UK, a lot of people will make it to be like their dining room space or maybe like a little seating area or something. And so that's what I did in this house. But then the conservatory piece on the front portion of the build, I decided to make into a greenhouse. And in there, I put like a flower arranging table, loads of different planters. I placed down some like ivy on the walls that has some like rose bushes in them. There is also a art easel in there, a rocking chair, some like crocheting bits and bobs. It just ends up being such a cute little sweet room and it was just... I'm just so happy with it and it just yeah i just think it makes the build but then also in this house something which i got the impression of anyway from this initial picture that i was looking at on pinterest i wanted to have some sort of like dip in it like I, want, I didn't want this house to be completely flat i wanted there to be some terrain manipulation i wanted it to be a little bit hilly and so basically i have already come in and i've started doing a little bit of terrain manipulation when you actually would initially drive into the house or like when your sims would walk up to the mailbox it's kind of on a bit of a hill and then they go down some stairs and then there's kind of like a little sunken area if you want to put it that way in the sunken area i end up placing down some planters it's also like where the front door ends up being but then your sims can walk up some more stairs into this kind of like higher rise area over here that i'm just playing about the terrain paint and over here ends up being like a little pond ends up being at so many different hydrangeas which you're going to see me pull out these hydrangeas i use them everywhere i am absolutely obsessed with this plant so this is by max 20 I, by the way, I will have absolutely everything linked in a Google Doc in the description box down below. Whenever I do my CC builds, I always link the CC to a Google Doc because I personally feel like if I was to link all of the different CC that I've used in the description box, sometimes it's a little bit like hard to follow along with and sometimes you lose where you, where you download and you lose your place and stuff. And so whenever I do do CC builds, I always link to a Google Doc. Also for me, I don't know if anyone else is the same, but for me, I would rather look at a Google Doc when I'm like downloading loads of cc because i like to do columns with with my cc like google doc links because i basically like to have it so you've got the creator and then you've got all the different packs that they've used and then all the different links to go and download them packs or like cc packs if that makes any sense i just feel like if you've got it on a google doc it's just nicely sections it's nicely like I basically try and make it as easy as I can possible. It's basically what I'm trying to say for you to download all the CC that you're going to see in this video. Also, I do want to mention, you might notice on the Google Doc, there ends up being like a little key. This is something that I've done in pretty much every one of my CC build videos. Basically, I'm someone that I will watch a speed build on YouTube of someone using the most beautiful CC and I want to go and download all of it. But then I might have watched a video that they might have previously done and they've used the same CC. And sometimes I end up downloading the same stuff that I've already previously downloaded. I mean, I don't know. You might have a better memory than me, but me personally, I, I end up having like duplicates of the same CC packs that I've downloaded from one creator. And then I'll watch another video and I'll see them again. And then I'm not too sure if I've previously downloaded them or not. And so I always just download them just in case and then over time there basically ends up being a bit of a build up of duplicate cc that you've already previously downloaded and so to help stop that and so that doesn't happen to you because it's happened to me far too many times i basically with my google doc links i will link all the cc that i've used i'll link every single creator their pack names where you can download it like make it as easy as possible but then i create this little key and i'll basically color code the, the packs that I used in my previous CC build, which I think off memory, the last CC build that I did was the uh, London Townhouses, which I've just realized is also English inspired. Honestly, just noticed that. My, I didn't, why did that not register in my head until just now? But yeah, the last CC build that I did before this one, I built a set of three London Townhouses with a bridal store. And yeah, I, I did it in there. So what you'll see in the Google Doc link is I'll have them highlighted in a random color. It might be blue, it might be pink, it might be, I don't know, yellow or something. And if they're highlighted in that color, then it means I've already previously linked them in the CC build before this one. I really hope that makes sense, but it, I'll explain it all in the Google Doc link, don't worry. But anyway, yeah, the, the blue hydrangeas or like the blue and purple and pink and white hydrangeas, they are from Max 20. I am absolutely obsessed with these flowers and so I mean you can see that I've already done a good section of landscaping already and I've used them quite a bit. I just think they're the most gorgeous flowers in the whole entire world. Now normally in my normal builds where I don't use custom content I'm often one to pop down the odd hydrangea 
I say the odd hydrangea. I end up using a lot of hydrangeas normally in my builds because I just think they're the most beautiful flowers. And now I have some CC of them and I just absolutely went to town, did not hold back with creating this really colorful garden with the landscape and I just, it just looks so good to me. But you can see that the actual, like the landscaping and kind of like the sectioning off the, the front initial driveway has already come together. I'm just currently just going around and basically filling in these empty areas of where the mud is. Now off camera, I do decide to change the landscaping on the front left corner ever so slightly because basically I, I felt like it was too blocky. Like it just looked too square. You see what I mean? Like how I have the fence pieces and there's kind of like a bit of a gap and that's where your Sims will like drive their car in through. I end up on the left hand side pushing back that fence ever so slightly and making it so it's a little bit shorter. I then end up placing some more like colorful flowers there and just, I tried to break it up a bit because I felt like the way that I had originally landscaped and kind of like did the tray manipulation, it just felt very square and I didn't want it to feel square. I wanted it to feel like it was a natural kind of landscape and stuff. But you can see that I'm just going around and changing a few of the hydrangeas colors. They come in so many beautiful colors. They come in white, I think three different versions of pink. I think also purple and then blue. And there's also, I believe, a version of the high rangers that have blue and purple in them, like how they do in real life. I also have some little tiny tulips that I've dotted about in some areas of the landscaping. Again, these tulips are from Max 20. Also, actually, you can't see it right now, but there is a little shed. It's kind of up the little staircase, just before you head into the archway area, there's a little tiny shed. That is, again, from Max20. Max20 is honestly one of my favorite CC creators. Every single time they come out with a new CC pack, my mouth is just on the floor because it is just so breathtaking and just so beautiful. But they had recently, I say recently, they had come out with a CC pack that is garden related, but I had recently basically just downloaded it. And so I just basically wanted to use pretty much everything that they use within the CC pack. Came with like a little wheelbarrow that ends up being like little odd pops. There is also a literal greenhouse that you can get within this garden at CC pack by Max 20, which I didn't end up using because where I had the conservatory on both like the front and then side portion of the build, I felt like if I would have also chucked in another exterior building that also had a glass roof, it just would have felt a little bit too too much. Like it would just be a little bit overpowering for me anyway. I, I didn't want this house, like the garden wise, to be loads of different like exterior buildings, loads of different like blocks of walls and windows basically. I wanted it to feel like a really natural and just sweet, cute garden when i was building this house i didn't have like a, a storyline for sims that i imagine living here i just honestly just wanted to build something that made my heart happy and just go to town with a cc but i wanted the whole entire house both the interior and the exterior to feel like a very english kind of like soft cottage you know that saying like live in a soft life like you go out and you tend to your garden you often make things in your kitchen you might have like a few chickens and you know that kind of like term soft life i imagine that the sims that live in this house have a very soft life and they don't have any chickens but that's the kind of idea that i had for them i just wanted to decorate it so cutesy and just so just like secret gardeny. Does that make sense? You know, just really cutesy garden is basically what I'm trying to say. And I mean, I use like this little wedding archway, which I feel like helps get that point across because it's a little bit more like whimsical, if you want to put it that way. But over here, we end up having a pond. I end up placing some ducks into the pond. You can't see them when I'm in build mode because the way that you place down like ducks and fish and crocodiles and swans and stuff into ponds in the game, you basically have this little, little like slab and you place it down onto the pond. And then when you go into gameplay, you'll then notice that then these little like ducks and swans and stuff start spinning about. But there is ducks in this pond. I didn't place down a fishing post which feel free to add one in but i didn't feel like the sims would fish in this house i feel like it's just their their mates that the fish are their friends i don't imagine that they would actively want to go and catch them but i mean feel free to add that in if you do want to but by the little shed area i placed down like a little broom some little wellington boots that also ends up being like spare pots and like gardening equipment and stuff and then when you actually come down from the archway i then wanted to have some sort of outdoor seating area Currently, I'm just faffing about at the back of the house, kind of like where the back kitchen door is. I end up using this ivy, which is from the domain set 
by Piero Sim, I think that's how you pronounce his name, but it is the most beautiful ivy. I didn't even know that I had it in my game until I started doing this little area and it is just so beautiful. And so I end up placing that ivy and kind of like these rose bushes on certain little areas that dotted around the exterior of the house. But where the landscaping for this build, it took me so long. Like I just, I was having the time of my life, don't get me wrong, like I was thoroughly enjoying myself. I felt like it would have been a little bit too long of landscaping and so like the back areas like the back corners of the building stuff I do decide to cut out the landscaping but on some of the different bump outs on the house yeah I end up placing down that little ivy with a little like pink roses in it it's just it's just so pretty but by the actual back door area I placed down some planters also placed down some like wellington boots and also like a little chair there is also a tap you know, like an exterior garden tap. You know, like a hose pipe when you want to go like walk in your garden and stuff. I placed down a a little tap, which I imagine the Sims would maybe like fill up their watering cans and then they'd go around the garden and then water all of their beautiful flowers. But also in the garden, one of the things that I absolutely love using, I've used them in so many different CC builds, is this slide set that is by Ravishing. I say slide set, it's because I was looking at the the plant box that I kind of like popped around it. But the slide itself is a it's a single item. You know how I was saying that CC sometimes comes with like mini mods, so it will be a bit of custom content, but then it will also include some like more exclusive gameplay that's exclusive to that item. This slide that is in the back garden is basically a mini mod. So I use this in my personal gameplay. I've used this in previous CC builds. It is so much fun and I really wish we had something like this in the actual Sims 4 itself, like with some sort of like DLC or something, because kids can actively go up that slide and they can just play around on, on the playground equipment. I then decided to pair it with this little like sandbox, almost like frame. This is by Harry. Now Harry had recently come out with this coastal collection which I remember seeing this coastal collection for the first time on Instagram and my oh, it was just so beautiful and I was so excited to get my hands on it and actually play around with it. The coastal collection by Harry ends up having like windows and doors and wallpapers and loads of different furniture pieces. We've got kitchen counters, we've got armchairs, we've got beds. We end up having so much in this coastal collection and it's so, so good. I can't even explain it. But there is this, like, this little sandbox and it is just so perfect to kind of pop into your back garden and try and make it seem like some sort of play area. And so that is exactly what I did. I popped down some to rain paint in the actual sandbox itself. I initially used one that is from from the Sims 4 base game, like it's one of the base game sands, but then when I came in and I was playtesting this house, I noticed that my kid couldn't make a sand castle and that was literally the whole entire point. <laughs> so I decided to change the sand to be one which is from the Island Living expansion pack. And then that way kids could be in this like, little like sectioned off sandbox, literally making sand castles. And then they can also go up the slide. And then next to the slide as well, something else which I'm so excited about we've got this little like outside wendy house which again is from the coastal collection by harry i am just so in love with it it is basically you know the dream home decorator game pack we got this almost like animal tent that you can plop down into your sims bedrooms maybe into like a playroom or something and it's basically a tent that kids and off memory i think toddlers as well can go in and play make-believe they can nap in there like they can just basically chill out in this little tent but Harry basically took that and made it into a Wendy house and I'm just it's just so cute like it's got like a little like, it's got like a little like mat it's got like a little mailbox it's also got like a little flower thing outside the windows it is just so so cute I can't I actually can't even tell you how cute it is and so I needed to use it in this build so I placed it down next to like the other playground equipment also in the back garden I placed down at some like armchairs almost watching the like the sand box area i was thinking that maybe the kid in this house likes to go out in the in the garden they like to build sand castles play on the slide play in the wendy house and maybe the parents like to uh, sit down on them armchairs have a little cup of tea i placed down some like little teacups and like a little tiny teapot as well to try and show that but they maybe sit down on them armchairs and maybe have a chit chat maybe one of them likes to read maybe one of them likes to crochet or something and yeah just watch their their kid in or kids because it ends up being two kids rooms in this house i actually decorated the rooms by the way to be one for a set of parents one for a kid one for an infant i have infant cc now but then also one guest bedroom as well so maybe like the the kid and the infant play in the sandbox even though infants can't interact with i mean i don't think they can i haven't actually tried that myself but i mean maybe you can just lay them down actually no i was about to say maybe you could just lay them down in the sand you no know, when you just put an infant on the floor and then just like leave them to it i was about to say maybe you could just put the infant in the sandbox but thinking about it please don't do that 
especially in real life because that's probably the worst idea ever so don't, don't, don't do that but yeah you could just i imagine that the the family like sit outside in the garden maybe the infants on like one of the parents laps and the other ones crochet in and then the kids in the sandbox it's just a really cutesy idea that i had and so yeah i, I placed that down to the back garden also end up finishing off with a few different planters and then i think that's pretty much it for the back garden space in terms of activities that ends up being so much by the way on the inside of this house in terms of things for your sims to do off memory to kind of like list a few things that your sims can do in this house that ends up being like a piano in the lounge room that also ends up being multiple different bookcases which actually is nothing to write home about but there is multiple different reading areas basically in this house that also ends up being like art easels and flower arranging tables and more planters on the inside and crocheting and just loads of just stuff basically and then also the kid has like a little tent in their room oh, i use the tiny travelers stuff pack like the cc stuff pack and there's kind of like this thing that like kind of like drapes from the ceiling it's really cute but i placed down like a little doll's house in there and then there's also like multiple different toys and then there's also like play mats for the infant and stuff i now have a neutral play mat <laughs> for infants in my game which i personally was so happy to find because i don't know if you've seen it you probably have but in the sims 4 with the grand together expansion pack we have this play mat and you can pop infants into it and you can do like tummy time you can just leave the infant to it and they'll kind of like look at the toys and stuff but it comes in some quite extravagant swap i say extravagant quite colorful swatches that sometimes are quite hard to decorate around and i now have a cc plane is actually how fun is this it's actually called sad beige baby play mat like that's the actual name for it because it just comes in some really nice neutral swatches one of them being beige and then also like cream and white and like pastel blue and pastel green it's just i personally feel like so needed in my personal gameplay but either way moving on as you can see i've now moved on into the inside of this house now like always i started off by like the front entrance hallway into the build i did notice that it does end up looking quite similar to one of my not my last cc build that i did because that was london townhouses but one of my cc builds that i've done previously to that it does end up looking quite a similar hallway wise and that is just because i have the organic set which is by felix andre and hey harry and in that set we just have the most beautiful coat racks we have the most beautiful little benches with like a blanket on and just wellington boots and just stuff and it's just so cutesy and i just can't help myself and so it does end up looking quite similar to one of the previous hallways that i've done but i don't think it's that much of an issue also in the hallway space end up placing down quite a large side table again the one that i've used is from hey harry and felix andre from the organic set i'm gonna try and know where like all the different things i'm using are from don't get me wrong not every single piece of cluster that i pull out because I, I literally would be here until next year but like in terms of like structure pieces or something that i feel like some people might want to know where certain things are from in like cc wise i'm gonna try and remember every single pack and every single creator and let you know like i said it'll be in the google doc as well but i feel like sometimes when you're watching a speed build it's quite handy if someone mentions where one particular thing is from i find anyway but yeah also in the entrance hallway you obviously have like the staircase which these upstairs placed down quite a big armchair it's a single armchair but it looks like one of them a, like a cuddle seat <laughs> do you know the ones that i'm talking about where you, you can get in real life where it's not like a love seat but it's not like a single armchair it's kind of like a it's like an armchair and off and you can kind of like cuddle on it looks like one of them placed one of them down also placed down a wall clock but now as you can see i've now moved on into the kitchen so this kitchen probably is one of my most favorite kitchens i have ever built i know i've said that before and i think i said this previously in another cc build of mine but this one tops it for me i just i'm so absolutely in love. i actually can't even put into words how much i love not even just this kitchen but this whole entire house but most in particular the kitchen because the kitchen the screenshots of it you'll see it at the end of the video but they're just so beautiful because the kitchen has these open doors which lead out onto the conservatory where the dining room table is and the lighting in this room at pretty much every single time of the day is just absolutely chef's kiss can't i actually can't even explain it but in here i placed down the counters which are from the Gru set by felix andre there is no matching wall cabinets which is something that i discovered when i was doing this speed build but i also have the london 
London set by Felix Andre and I noticed that the, the cabinets from that set match quite nicely with them. Also end up using this Smeg looking fridge again by Felix Andre. This one is from the Chateau set. Is that how you say that word? Chateau? Chateau? I never know how you pronounce it but it's from that set from Felix Andre. If you've ever watched any of my videos before you've probably heard me talk about one of my goals in life funny enough is to have a Smeg fridge which I know to a lot of people you're probably going to be like come on it's, it's literally just a fridge but to me I really is one of my my goals in life in like my dream kitchen I would love to have a smeg fridge a smeg toaster a smeg kettle I just think they're absolutely beautiful and up until recently I I didn't have any like cc looking ones in my game really but yeah Felix Andre came out with one and I used it for the first time in this build also it was the first time me seeing it in this build like when I was decorating this kitchen didn't even know it existed like, I didn't know I had that in the fridge category I was gonna go for you know the cottage living expansion pack we have like a smeg looking fridge within that DLC and normally I like to use that one in my bills because it does look like a smeg fridge and I, I love a smeg fridge but I, I found out that we have now a CC version of it and so of course I used it in the kitchen also in the kitchen I end up placing down some like pans onto the walls also end up placing down a little chopping board as well that looks like a, a tomato has been chopped up there is also like kitchen scales a toaster a little blender the the toaster and the blender or like the is it called a blender yeah, it's called a blender, like the smoothie making thing. They are not functional, they are just purely for decoration, but I actually don't mind. I, I still really like the look of them. It also ends up being a microwave in the kitchen, which I do want to mention, I had to end up removing because you might have seen the way that I placed down the microwave, I placed it kind of like behind the, the archway which had these open doors. Now, when I was coming in and I was playtesting, I was expecting that you'd probably have to swivel the doors around to get it so your sims could interact with the microwave. Swiveled the doors around, Sim so couldn't interact with it. I thought, all right. So then I removed that door completely and just literally de deleted the wall so there was nothing there and then my sim still couldn't interact with it. Then I thought, well, maybe it's like the, the cabinet and like with the books on top of it. I then removed it and then I had it so it was literally just the microwave on the counter, my sim still couldn't use it. Don't know what happened there. So I end up removing the microwave in the kitchen, but there is a kettle. I felt like I needed to have a kettle. Well, I'm building an English cottage. I felt like it was completely necessary to have a kettle and the kettle works like how a, a coffee machine functions in the game, but it also has the, the teapot integrated into it. So in The Sims 4, we have the coffee machine, but then we also have a separate teapot, which to me personally, if I'm being completely honest, is actually quite annoying because I, I switch up what I have. I might have a cup of tea sometimes, but then sometimes in the morning, I like a cup of coffee. I don't in my Sims houses want to have to go through the ag of having both a tea making station and then also a coffee station because to me, it just gets a little bit too much. Like we're not, we're not like in a, we're not baristas. <laughs> I just want to have one object. But yeah, there is now a kettle that I placed down into the kitchen, which has all the different tea options. Your Sims can make like chamomile tea, bee tea, like, I think one of them's like Earl Grey and stuff, but then they can also just make a regular cup of coffee. So I'll place that down in the corner. Also end up placing down some like mug decorations and just bits and bobs to make it look like it's like a little tea making, coffee making station. But as you can see, I have just moved on into the dining room. In the dining room, like I said, this ends up being in kind of like the conservatory. So it's got a completely glass roof. Again, with the lighting in, in this room, it is just so beautiful at pretty much every single time of the day. When I was decorating it, I did have to go into evening mode though because I was worried that you wouldn't really be able to see what I was doing. I mean, I could see what I was doing, but I felt like with the video sped up, it might look a little bit like, hang on, what's happening here? And so I did decide to switch it into evening mode. And even the evening mode, like the way that the light just shines in through both the roof and then all the windows around it is just so beautiful. But I end up placing down like, this really long three three tile table, end up placing down some like chairs on top of it. That also ends up being a little like seating area in, in the dining room. Also use a lot of plants, which in all fairness, I am a little bit of a plant lover in The Sims 4. I love having so much greenery in my Sims houses. I love popping like plants into corners and plants on like bedside tables and different counters and units and stuff. Like I love plants in this game and I do often use plants in the majority of my Sims houses. But where I was building this dining room into kind of like a conservatory, 
I felt like I had kind of a bit of an excuse to basically go to town with all the different CC plants that I've got. And so I placed down some onto the floor. I placed down like big ones and then like smaller ones that had like little ivy lines. There was also some onto like a shelving unit that were kind of like hanging down. I really did want to use some that were like hanging down from the ceiling. But then I remembered we got a glass roof. Bit, bit unrealistic and so I didn't end up placing down any from the ceiling so yeah I ended up placing down someone to a shelving unit but then just off the dining room as you would have seen I just quickly did the little kind of like like greenhousey kind of room I, it is still the conservatory but I wanted to have part of the conservatory to be somewhere where your sims could go in and they can plant loads of different flowers and fruit and vegetables and maybe do some like flower arranging and so that's exactly what I did in that room I ended up placing down a flower arranging table I then decided to clutter it up with loads of different like little seedlings and packets of stuff and just bits and bobs basically that I feel like you would find in a in a little greenhouse there is also a little rocking chair in the corner an art easel your sims can also crochet in that room they can basically do a bit in that room in terms of like gameplay and stuff and the lighting as well in in that little greenhouse room is just so beautiful because it's got both a glass roof but then also the windows pretty much wrapping around the whole entire way and it's just yeah it's just so beautiful but now as you can see i've now moved on into the next room which is the lounge room now quickly before i did the lounge room i did just go i say off camera i did actually end up recording it but i did decide to cut it out but there was a little utility room and then also a small bathroom just off the the initial dining room so i don't know if you would have seen it but when I was decorating the dining room, we had these like open doors going into the conservatory. And then there was kind of like a, a glass door, or, or I say glass, I think it was metal actually, but there was a metal door going into somewhere else. I ended up making that into a utility room. So it's got a washing machine, it's got a tumble dryer, but I end up spending far too much time clustering it up. And basically I decided to cut it out of the video really hope you don't mind i really don't like cutting out too much in my videos if any if i can help it just because i really like showing the whole entire process of like every single nook and cranny of all of my builds but sometimes when you have as much footage as what i did for this build it was just it was completely unnecessary for the utility room to be featured because it just took me far too long but you will see it the the little like utility room laundry room in the screenshots it basically just ends up having like washing machine tumble dryer placed down like a dressing gown hanging off a hanger there is also like ironing things in there like an electrical iron is in, is in the utility room there is also little like tins and extra towels and blankets and stuff it's very cutesy but yeah i did decide to cut it out but like i said you will see it in the screenshots so i really hope you guys don't mind and kind of on the subject of cutting out i feel really bad saying this but i also decided to cut out one of the bedrooms which again i hate cutting out any footage if i can of any of my fields but i decided to cut out the guest bedroom in this house and my reasoning for it in all fairness is the guest bedroom is decorated not similar like it's got a different bed and it's got a different bedspread and it's got different objects but in terms of all the different bedrooms in this house i decorated one for a parent one for a kid one for an infant and then a guest bedroom and i personally felt like the guest bedroom was kind of like the same kind of room as the parents room if you get my drift and so i did decide to cut that one out as well i'm really sorry but when i cut it out it was literally five minutes of just a purely guest bedroom which i personally imagine if you was to download this house you would probably have just your sims mates come and stay you know like when they stay over they'd probably just use that as a room and it's to me not as important as some of the other rooms in this house but apart from that everything else i decided to keep in it was just the utility room and then yeah that that one guest bedroom which again you will see that in the screenshots but anyway you can see that i'm coming in and decorating the lounge room in here i went for these sofas which are from the domain set by piero sim i also use these bookcases in in this lounge room which you're going to see these bookcases quite a bit because i'm absolutely obsessed with them the bookcases that i'm talking about i've got one set next to the fireplace and then i've also got some on kind of like the back wall they are by felix andre and they're from their chateau set and they are just so perfect for just like cluttering up with loads of different like pots and vases and flowers and record players and books and just stuff i absolutely love them and so i do decide to use these bookcases quite a bit in, in this field but in the actual lounge room itself we also end up having like a little piano in the corner we also have a fireplace also have a tv it is on the wall above the fireplace it, it looks like a picture i promise you it's a, it's a tv but it is by harry and felix andre and it is from i think one of their earlier collaborations the living room set it's basically a tv when your sims turn it on it the picture disappears and it goes into a regular tv 
love that like, i love that to pieces i use this in literally every single one of my personal households builds because to me when i'm playing and my sim ain't got they ain't got the telly on and they're just you know they're in the kitchen the dining room or whatever or maybe someone's just in the lounge room maybe reading a book or something and you've just got this square of blackness it is just so jarring sometimes i'm so happy that they did that when they when they created the living room set and so yeah there is a tv on the wall it just so happens to look like a painting but you can see that i've now moved over into the next room which is a little home office i love this room so much i just think it ends up being so just so lovely so currently i've got these curtains on the wall which the ones that i've used i think off memory are from a winged llama i think anyway but if that's incorrect i'll put a little bit of text on the screen but i initially wanted to use these ones but when i basically finished this room i then decided that i didn't like them in this room i do like them but not in this room and so i decided to switch them out to be the ones from the organic set i do also end up using these curtains in some other spaces of the build but i just, I just wanted to kind of close in the home office a little bit and the curtains that i've used they make it look like the windows are a little bit bigger than what they are and so i end up using the ones from the organic set and i have like more of them and then it feels like a little bit more of like a cozier office space in here as well the wallpaper that i decided to go for is from the i think it's the domain set again by pra sim it is just so beautiful so i use this wallpaper in the parents room as well just because i loved it so much also i believe i end up using it in the kids room but it comes in the most beautiful pink swatch and so yeah you'll see that when we move on to the upstairs but in the home office i end up having like a little desk area it's got a pc on it also got again these bookcases i placed down some like files in them also some like books and like a little plant that, like the ivy is hanging down also end up placing down this armchair next the bookcase which i can't remember off memory who created this armchair but i know it's from the cow drone set which i've had this cc set in my game for so long i'm pretty sure it's like one of the first pieces of cc that i ever downloaded i'm just so in love with it this armchair also comes with a matching footstool but i just decided to use the armchair on its own but then as well as that there ends up being a little bar cart in this room as well which i have spoken about this bar cart in some of my previous cc builds honestly if i could recommend you like I can't even tell you one. If I could recommend you like 10 pieces of CC, right, to download, because which I feel personally are, are essential for gameplay, it would be this single tile bar cart. In The Sims 4, we all know, we've got so many different bars at this point. I feel like every single DLC that we get, we get a new bar, and oftentimes we'll get a new bar back to like decorate behind the bar, but they're just so big and sometimes they can be quite clunky. Like the amount of times I've personally had a sim in like an apartment or something and I wanted them to be able to make a glass of wine when they're cooking dinner or something. But the the actual bars that we've got within the DLCs within The Sims 4, they're just so hard to just like pop into a corner. But Ravishing has got these bar carts. There is, I think, three in total. There is a metal one, a wood one, and there's another one of like another material. But they're one tile and it's just so honestly so essential if i was you and you're looking for like some key pieces of cc please download that bar cart it's honestly saved me so many different times in so many of my different sims houses and apartments but yeah there is a little bar cart in the home office i then place down at some glasses underneath it and then also some books also a few different bottles of wine the actual bottles of wine i think are yeah again from ravishing as well ravishing is one of my top favorite modders creators they are just absolutely amazing at some of the stuff that they do like they have so many different handy things and yeah I, I have a lot of their cc both in the google doc link but then also in this build as well but you can see that i've now moved on to the upstairs and i've started furnishing one of the bathrooms so in here i finally got to play around with one of the newer pieces of cc that i've recently downloaded or like cc packs if you want to put it that way which is the auntie vera set by pra sim now this bathroom set is just absolutely everything like it is just so so good we have bathtubs we have also a shower we have shower dividers we have toilets we have sinks we have the most beautiful mirror you can see that i placed down the mirror behind the little sink unit it is just all so so good and it also has some like clutter pieces as well so we have like toothbrush holders a little bar of soap also a soap dispenser but then we also have one of my new favorite pieces of like clutter decorations from cc we have a little dressing gown now it might seem like a little detail to some people but this makes me so happy because i always like to try and decorate bathrooms for like the perfect like self-care 
evening if you get what I mean especially this one I, I came into this bathroom and I wanted to clutter it up so it looks like maybe one of the parents wants to lay in the bath have a cup of tea read a book light a candle that kind of thing but having like them little self-care decorations is one thing having a literal dressing gown wall decoration that you can plop onto the wall to make it look like your sim is going to put their dressing gown on after their bath it just makes me so happy it just it's just so good but I place it down into the corner of the bathroom also use these like dividers again from the auntie vera set by pro sim and they come in window form but then also like divider forms then you can make a shower as big or as little as you want it to be which is absolutely perfect especially in the bathroom in this house because it's not like the bathroom wasn't big enough to have both a separate bath and then a shower because the, the bathroom i actually end up placing down like a little a little square and kind of like cubed it off a bit to give it a little bit more dimension because initially it was just like a big rectangle but the, the bathroom size wasn't so much an issue it was just initially when i placed down the shower i felt like if i would have just left the shower in the corner it would have looked like I was just trying to squeeze it in if you get what I mean like sometimes I feel like you can place down things and it looks like it's just squished in and it was kind of like an afterthought whereas the dividers make it look like a built-in shower and it just it's just so lovely but yeah as you can see I've now moved on into the next room which is the first bedroom that you're going to see me decorate which is the infant's room so it's pretty much a little nursery so in here I decided to use a lot of the coastal collection which is by Hey Harry they have this coastal collection which is kind of coming out in a series Series of different parts if you're familiar with you know like the organic set we had like part one which was exterior and then uh, part two which was interior but harry has recently come out with this coastal collection but every single part seems to be like a different room within the house so like there's one part which focuses in the kitchen there's also another part which i believe focuses on like the lounge room there is also like a nursery part and so on and so forth I'm using part five, which is the coastal nursery collection. So in here, I decided to use the crib and then also the armchair and the changing table. And I cluttered them up with like the armchair, I placed on like a little blanket, a little pillow. On the crib itself, I placed down this little tiny blanket, which you can separate them as well. You don't have to have the blanket on the crib, but Hey Harry designed the crib and then like a little blanket that you can pop on top of it if you do decide to. But then there is also that bookcase in this room as well, which I said you're gonna see this book case a lot in this house i'm also going to use it in the kids room but i wanted to include it into the toddler's room because i now have so much like infant clutter it is just so good and i wanted somewhere to plop it down onto and so in the bookcase i placed down like a little decorative house i placed down a literal like diaper bag thing with like diapers coming out of it and it's got a, a sims infant on it and then there is also like books in there and like those little plushies and there's also a frame in there as well which it looks like a completely empty frame. I'm not too familiar where exactly the frame is from, but I'll try and link it at the top of the Google Doc because this is something that I have recently downloaded for myself in personal gameplay and it is just so good. I want to tell everyone about it. So I am someone that I like to take a lot of pictures whenever I play the game myself. I'm a big screenshotter, but then also in actual gameplay, I like to get my Sims to take a lot of family photos. But up until recently, I've always just used like the default frame that comes with the photos that your Sims takes. Recently, I have found some really good frames which your Sims can basically plop down their photos into it and they just look so much better. I've found some frames that you hang onto the walls. I've found frames that you plop down onto like services like leaning ones and stuff. So, so good. And so I placed one of them down into the nursery. I was just thinking maybe you want to take a picture of the infant or like the baby or something and then plop it down into yeah that little photo frame is just like an extra little personal touch that you could add into that room i use them i think downstairs them frames and then also you're going to see me use them quite a bit in the parents room they're honestly they're really handy and like i said i just want to tell everyone about it because up until recently i've never really thought about downloading custom frames for my sims photos but now i have honestly i don't think i'm ever going to go back to using the normal frames but besides the point in that room i end up finishing it off with a little play mat which i think i've already mentioned but the name of that play mat is called sad beige baby play mat like how funny <laughs> because it is just a, a plain neutral play mat which i'm so grateful that someone created because I personally prefer to use more neutral kind of swatches in, in my Sims houses, but that's just my preference. But yeah, I just thought that was really funny that that is the actual official name for that CC item. But 
besides the point, as you can see, I've now moved on to the next room, which is the kids' room. Now, both the kids' room and then also the parents' room end up having walk-in wardrobes, which, to be honest, isn't really so much of like a typical thing that you find in the UK. I, I actually spoke about this recently because I, I, I was saying that in the UK, we don't really have like walk-in wardrobes. We just have like chest of drawers. We just have wardrobes kind of things. I can't remember if it was in my build last week or the week before. It was one of them two that I mentioned that, but in this house, ironically ends up having so both yeah the parents and then the kid have a walk-in wardrobe it was more so because if i didn't make it into a walk-in wardrobe there would have been more bathrooms than sims but then also if i didn't make them into bathrooms and i just extended the bedrooms the bedrooms would have just been so long and narrow and so i just thought you know what i'm just gonna split it up at least this way i also just have an excuse to use a lot of the different sectional walk-in wardrobe pieces that i have of cc because i have a, quite a big amount of like you know like ikea packs wardrobes there's actually literal pack which is the ikea packs by i think it's Felix, Andre and Hey Harry, they created like an IKEA collaboration and they've got like basic furniture basically in this CC pack for like your Sims first house, like their start home kind of thing. But they have like a PAX wardrobe system from that CC pack. I've also got another one from Charlie Pancakes, which I use a lot. There is also ones that I've got from Pierre Sim from the David's Apartment CC pack. Like I've got a lot of custom wardrobe CC basically and I basically just got to use it and go to town with it. But in this room, as you can see, I decided to use this bed, which the single bed frame itself is from, I believe the groove set by Felix Andre. And then I think the, the bedding is, I think from Pierre Sim off memory from the Oak House collection. But then with the actual bed frame itself, if you look at it, it's got like these little pink tassels that's hanging off the corners of like the actual bed frame. It is just so sweet. And so I had to use it because there's kind of like a pink thing going on in this room. But then there also ends up being a base game teddy bear in, in the corner, which I wanted to use the teddy bear that we've got from the Tiny Travelers set, but I used that teddy bear in the, the nursery. It's kind of like a, a zebra kind of looking <laughs> plushie, but I didn't want to use the same one. And so, yeah, I decided to use one that is from the Sims 4 base game. To be honest, typically, whenever I do CC builds, I have mentioned this before in previous videos, but whenever I do do custom content builds, I don't really use that much DLC content. Like I might use like the odd thing here and there. It might be like one or two cluttered decorations or like I might lose like a window or something like that. But in terms of when it comes around to furnishing and decorating the inside of CC houses, I normally try and stick just to using custom content because I, I like the idea of if you're someone that maybe doesn't have that many that many DLCs and you're really into custom content, at least that way you can download the house and not have to worry about too many things missing because I feel like if you just have literally the Sims 4 base game and then just all this different CC and you just download this house, I don't really think too much would be missing off, off memory. Like maybe the the odd flower in the garden which you might be from like cottage living or something but apart from that the majority of the stuff that i did use is yeah from from cc but the the teddy bear that i've used is just a base game teddy bear because i just didn't want to use the same one but then also in the kids room we end up having like a little toy box we have that little like canopy tent in the corner which is from like, the tiny travelers set and then i sized down this doll's house which again is from the same set and i made it look like the kid can play with the doll's house underneath this little like curtain then there also ends up being again the bookcase which i cluttered up with loads of different like toys and books and like your plant and stuff something i wanted to mention about these bookcases which i personally think is is quite a good idea because it makes you feel a little bit more connected to your sims but basically the actual bookcases themselves they're completely plain like they come in short wall height medium wall height tall wall height there's loads of different like corner pieces and you can basically customize them to be however you want your your bookcase look but the thing is with them you can basically freely clutter them up so you can place down you know like books and plants and vases and like clutter pieces and plushies and all these different bits and bobs but something that i've been doing in my own personal gameplay which I personally really like the idea of, and I kind of want to talk about it because it might give you an idea to do something because I've personally been really enjoying the idea. But basically, I've been using these bookcases in my own personal save file. And basically, I've plopped them down into my Sims infant's room. And I've recently started the Super Sim Challenge, which if you're unfamiliar with this challenge, it's basically you have this Sim who 
goes and completes every single aspiration they complete every single skill they get to level 10 in every single career you no know, they get all the collectibles and they basically complete the sims 4 if you want to put it that way now i've recently started this challenge again but i've started it with an infant which i haven't yet done and i basically wanted to have some sort of like shelfing unit some sort of showcase for the infant for when they do all these different like memorable things throughout their life and i've plopped them down into my infant's room currently i haven't like faffed with the decorations too much because i haven't actually got the infant to complete too much but my idea for gameplay is as this sim will go throughout their life you can kind of change the bookcase up and say for example I plan on, on them when they're a kid going to scouts and getting all the different scouts trophies. When that happens, I want to have somewhere to proudly place all these different like, awards that they get. I'm going to plop them into the bookcase. They might reach a certain level in a certain career and get some sort of like achievement award or something. I want to have some sort of shelving unit for that. And so I have been doing that in my own personal gameplay. And I just thought it's a really good idea. And I kind of wanted to share it because I don't know, I like hearing what other people do in their gameplay. And so maybe you might, might like that and might want to do something else for yours because i feel like for, when you play the sims 4 you often get so much stuff and your sims pockets come just so full and you never know what to do with it but yeah you know, i i have the idea to use these bookcases and basically use them as almost like a shelfing unit for for my sim and all their different achievements that they're gonna they're gonna achieve in life but anyway that was completely off subject but moving on as you can see i just decorated the kids walking wardrobe which to be honest is quite similar to the walking wardrobe which i'm going to end up creating in this room as well because i've now moved on into the parents room but also in the kids room as you would have seen i placed down like a little desk area i placed down the little canopy with a doll's house also placed down a few extra frames onto both the bedside table and then also onto their walls as well again they're frames that your sims can have their actual photos in and not just like random photos of stuff but yeah in terms of like their walking wardrobe i try to decorate it quite similarly to what i end up creating the parents wardrobe to be like but in the kids wardrobe they end up having like more more toys and more like kid looking clothes if that makes sense but you can see and like i've already said i've now moved on into the parents room so in here i was really debating for some time what i wanted the beds to look like because i've got so many different cc beds and i always have such a hard time trying to decide which one i want to use in the end i decided to use this one which is from charlie pancakes I believe it's from the insomnia set i think again this is like one of the earlier pieces of cc that i ever i ever downloaded for my game but i absolutely love this bed and the thing is with cc beds they come separate so you can place down the bed frame but then also place down the actual like the mattress and like the comforter separately and so i used a actual bedding from i believe felix andre and i can't remember the set name i think it's fayan if that's how you pronounce it but it's one of felix andre sets but it's just so beautiful and i was debating using it downstairs in the guest bedroom but then i really liked the swatch like the the stripes on, on the actual comforter itself and so i thought i'd save it for the parents room because in the parents room i used quite a Larry-ish wallpaper but i absolutely love it it's the main one that i use in the home office downstairs but yeah in the actual parents room itself we end up having like a little armchair in the corner a plant also end up having like a standing mirror to be honest there wasn't really too much that i could add into the parents room because you might notice the actual initial room itself it's quite small not gonna lie to you but they have a quite a big walk-in wardrobe also with parents bedrooms i don't typically tend to fill them with loads of different like gameplay related items maybe like every so often i might chuck in like a rocking chair or i might place down like a bookcase and if it's like an absolutely ginormous bedroom then I'll, maybe i'll go to town and i'll place down like a chess table but in terms of like actual activities and skill building items in parents bedrooms yeah to be honest i don't really ever seem to place down too many because both in my own personal gameplay and I also just feel like in builds, it's nicer if you have them gameplay and skill building items more so dotted around the house rather than the actual bedroom because to me, the bedroom is literally a room with a bed in for my sims parents sounds really bad but i just literally just send them in there go to sleep and then they wake up they get changed and then they're off they're out and they're going around the world and doing about what they need to do they don't really need to spend too much time in their bedrooms and so you know i don't really seem to decorate them with too many skill building items i don't know if people mind that or not but it's just my personal preference but either way in the bedroom as well i place down at some more of them empty frames that you can put your own sims photos in they actually look quite cool i think they're placed above the bed but with the wallpaper it looks like 
the wallpaper is meant to be the picture but i mean you could leave it like that but they're actual yeah they're, they're frames that your sims can put their own personal family photos in and i just think it's really nice and really handy and something that i wanted to share because like i said i've recently downloaded these and they've just been such a game changer for me and i don't think i will ever go back to the normal frames from the actual sims 4 but anyway as you can see i'm just going around and cluttering up their walk-in wardrobe so in here i use the sectional wardrobe pieces which are from the lavish set by charlie pancakes i use these ones again in the kids room as well but in here i place down loads of different shoes loads of different like shoe boxes some luggage a laundry basket place down like clumps of jumpers the jumper like clutter decoration the ones on more so like the right hand side of the wardrobe they are from piero sim part of the david's apartment collection there is like separate piles of jumpers and trousers and shoes and there's also some like hanging shirts as well and i really needed some more like neutral kind of like clumps of, of clothes like that and so when i downloaded this set it was just absolutely perfect but also in this room as well there ends up being a little vanity makeup station so i end up placing down some like hair straighteners onto bits some skincare bits and bobs also like a tissue box a jewelry box also plops this really beautiful plant on the corner that's got like these little pink flowers and then there is also a laundry basket in the in this build as well it's in the dressing room there's only one because i didn't want to place down too many because there's so many different bedrooms i didn't want your sims to have to like be running up and down the stairs when they want to put a load of washing on but yeah i'll just go around the room finish it off and that is pretty much it so anyway guys i'm going to end this voiceover right here as always you can download this build via the gallery my gallery id is jessica pie or if you can search for the hashtag jessica pie YT or just the hashtag jessica pie as always thank you guys so much for watching this video and as always if you do like my content then please do subscribe and hopefully i will see you in my next sims 4 speedboarding video bye guys